This video will be part three in a series we're doing on 300 dental anatomy facts that if you know, you're going to do really good on this test. So part three is going to cover the canines on the upper and the lower. And we're going to start on the upper canines. Uh, the maxillary canine has the greatest cervical prominence of any anterior tooth. And so notice I put anterior on here. Again, you just have to be really careful when you're taking the test that you pay very close attention to um, how they're asking it because they love to trick you by uh, asking either anterior or posterior and hoping they'll trip you up assuming that you're thinking maybe just all teeth. So the maxillary canine has the greatest cervical prominence of any anterior tooth. So if you come here and take a look at the cervical uh, prominence you see it kind of jumps out a little bit from the CEJ. And the maxillary canine, when viewed from a proximal orientation, uh, mesial or distal, tends to be positioned with the most nearly vertical axis. So I drew a line here to represent that this tooth um, has the most straight line axis when viewed from the mesial or distal. Okay, these two questions are going to be guaranteed to be on the test, or some variation of it. So you definitely have to know this stuff. So the maxillary canine has the greatest overall total tooth length, and the maxillary canine has the longest root of any tooth. And so if you look here, we've got the longest tooth, longest root, but not the crown, okay? So we've just got the longest tooth and the longest root. Maxillary canine has the greatest facial lingual crown dimension of any anterior tooth. So if we look at it from the occlusal, um, I drew this line a little bit longer just to represent that it's got a pretty sizable facial lingual dimension. Okay, the maxillary canine um, distal contact is going to be centered. So if uh, as just a quick reminder, you know, we know the mnemonic is I just jacked Michael Jackson's moped. And that's going to tell us where the contacts are in these anterior teeth. Now if you come here, here's a canine. And so this point says the maxillary canine's distal contact is centered. So if you take a look right here, you know, pretty good. It looks like it's centered. Uh, that's, so there's a random fact that they like to ask about. And then the maxillary canine is the only tooth that has the potential of contacting both anterior and posterior teeth. And I'm sure you guys have seen this question a lot as you've been studying, as you've been doing your practice tests. I'd love to ask that one. The maxillary canine cusp tip is located facial to the lingual axis. So another way of saying it is it's centered or slightly facial. So then here's the cusp right here, cusp tip, and it's either centered or located slightly to the facial. So if the cusp tip is located a little bit more towards the facial, then the lingual is going to be more visible from the incisal view. And then the middle facial lobe of the maxillary canine includes the cusp tip. So here we've got the, the middle facial lobe right here and it includes the cusp tip. So, um, so yeah, so the lingual is more visible from the incisal view. Okay, the maxillary canine is going to have a distal bulge. So we're looking at it from the incisal here and you can see this distal asymmetry here. And that's another point that we need to remember. The mesial and the distal are going to be asymmetric because of the distal bulge. And you can see um, that here. And the crown form of canines from a facial view is going to be uh, pentagon. Okay, moving on to the mandibular canine now. Alright, so the mandibular canine has the straightest mesial alignment of crown to root. So going from crown to root, you can see it's nice and straight right there. And then the mesial surface of the crown of the mandibular canine is almost parallel to the long axis of the tooth. 
And so you can see it's pretty straight here. So those are two variations of kind of the same idea that they're testing on. Okay, so the mandibular canine has the longest crown at dimension of any other tooth. Longest crown. Definitely got to know that. The mandibular canine has a less prominent cingulum than the maxillary canine. So here is a picture of the two. I have this one going in the same orientation the maxillary canine would, going downward, and the mandibular is going upward. If you take a look at the, the cingulums here, you can see that the maxillary cingulum is a little bit more prominent, and then the mandibular canine is going to be more narrow mesiodistally than the maxillary canine. So going from mesial to distal, this lower canine is going to be narrower than the upper. And the way to remember that is to just think about the distal bulge on the maxillary and then also the flat mesial. So you're kind of losing something here on the mesial on the lower, but you're, you have a lot going on on the distal with the maxillary. The mandibular canine is the anterior tooth that most frequently exhibits a bifurcated root. And the bifurcation for the mandibular canine roots, um, when they are present, they're going to create a facial and a lingual root. The mandibular canine has the longest root length of any mandibular tooth. All right, so be very careful. So again, notice how the statement is worded. It's asking about the of the mandibular teeth. Now if it said of all teeth, then it would be the upper. So the longest root of any tooth is the maxillary canine. So, you know, just pay special attention to the details when you're taking this test. In cross section, uh, the root of the mandibular canine is irregularly oval and so I have a line going across here and then this is supposed to represent a cross section and so it's irregularly oval the end and the cross section of the mandibular canine at the CEJ is ovoid but wider mesiodistally at the labial and so they use the word ovoid, sometimes they say irregularly oval, but um, this idea is a little bit abstract, it's kind of tough to f visualize here, but if you cut this in cross section and then pretend like this is the, uh, the canal, then I, this is like the best I could do for drawing this, but uh, on the facial it's going to be a little bit wider in the mesiodistal direction than on the uh, lingual. And so that's kind of what that represents. So it's kind of squished on the lingual. And then in cervical cross section, the root of the mandibular canine is flattened in a mesiodistal direction. And so once you get a little lower, you go in a cross section. You know, if you imagine taking your fingers on the mesial and distal, it's kind of like you're squishing it with your fingers, squishing, squishing, squishing until it gets really skinny. And that's what the, um, the root is going to look like. It's a little more flattened, and so the, the canal is also a little more flattened. All right, when compared to the maxillary canine, the mandibular canine has contact areas located a little more incisally. And to remember that, just think about the mandibular incisors. You know, these guys are all pretty incisally located with their contacts. Okay, the mandibular canine has a continuous convex facial surface from incisal to apical end. So if you imagine going from incisal down to the base here, it's convex. And then the mandibular canine makes a C-shape from crown tip to root apex. And so that is another way that they can test you on the idea that this is a con there's a convexity when viewed from the uh, interproximal. The mandibular canines 
uh, have an incisal edge that is lingual to the long axis. So this is opposite to the upper canines. So when we're viewing the mandibular canine from the occlusal, we're going to see more of the facial aspect of it. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, keep studying. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, keep up the good work.